Blessings, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Hope you're doing well wherever you may be. I'm Dane, host of the Rocky Metal Guardian, and today I'm here to present my review of the new High on Fire album called Cometh the Storm. Great, well, let's just look at the album cover again. Great album cover, very dark looking. A nice pirate-like ship in the storm clouds, if you will. And on the back, sorry for that glare there, you have 11 tracks. And I'll go track by track as always, although it's hard to describe doom metal, but I will do my best. I won't go into elaborate detail like normal, but I will give um, a track by track um, review of each song. So, and then I'll give an overall um, general discussion of likes, dislikes, that kind of thing. Um, so this album is 58 minutes long. As I said, 11 tracks. This is the last album I'm sorry, this is the most recent album since their last album, which was Electric Wizard 2018. So it's been six years, five and a half. And as far as when's the last time Matt Pike has released anything, it's been two years since Pike versus the Automaton, his solo effort there, which I'm quite fond of both of these. Now, this album can best be described as, of course, doom metal, Sludge metal, of course, because at times it's fast paced, at other times it's very slow and drudgy or sludgy, right? Um, there's also some thrash elements, and that's to be expected um, because in, in previous parts of the discography, there's some of that, right? <clears throat> and um, there's almost a. Not sure if I want to use this phrase, but I want to say there's kind of a psychedelic edge to it, a psychedelic metal uh, vibe to it, um, which you get here and there in spurts on their in other parts of their discography. Um, so who's on this album? Of course, there's Matt Pike, who also produced this. There's Jeff Matz, who's on Mellotron, and of course, bass. And then you have Cody Willis coming over from Big Benz on drums replacing the previous drummer whose name eludes me. Now, in an interview, Matt Pike, I believe, was the one who said that there would be some new surprises and he hinted that there would be some um, Eastern influences in, in the album. And there is a little bit of that, which I'm proud to talk about. I wanna talk about that. So let's go ahead and get started. The And I'll talk about what are my favorite songs and that kind of thing, least favorite. So the opening track is Lamb's Bread, which is five minutes and 45 seconds. This is one of the best doom metal openers of all time, if you ask me. It's extremely heavy. It's a great opener, as I said. It's very fast-paced, great riffs. It's pounding, it's driven. The drums are also pounding and, 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 dr and a driving force that complements the, the great riffage you're getting from Matt. Um, the bass is glorious as well. Uh, it's a, I, I describe the song as an onslaught, a take no prisoners attitude. And then around the three and a half minute mark, you get this change in direction for a little while. You get this Eastern music flavor, um, Arabian, Persian, Turkish, if you will, Middle Eastern, uh, so to speak. As I said, um, why not, right? The Beatles did it with George Harrison on his sitar. You get some of this from Alex Lifeson on Caress of Steel um, and a part of YYZ. And then, of course, um, Zeppelin did it with song, a song like Four Sticks and a little bit well, cashmere, right? So it's it's a nice treat to get this from um, Pike and the Boys. So I, I'm loving the song. Um, so a great opener, as I said. Next is Burning Down, which is six minutes and 13 seconds. You have a slower intro, so we're going from a fast-paced song to a more slow, sludgy tempo, right? It's still pounding, though. It's great. The vocals I would describe as, go figure, Motorhead. Lemmy meets Phil Anselmo of Pantera. So Motorhead meets Pantera. Um, more than ever, oh, it sounds like that. The guitar is exquisite, it's to be expected, right? The guitar tone's fabulous. All right, next is Tris Magistus, and here you have even more fabulous opening, uh, great riffage, it's fabulous, uh, five minutes and 36 seconds. Uh, the word means thrice greatest, three times greatest, uh, if you look at the lyrics, it's dealing with Egyptian mythology, perhaps the alchemist Hermes Trick, Trismegistus, if I'm pronouncing that right. Just read the lyrics, it's, it's fabulous. Um, so dealing with the god Toth, uh, the god of wisdom, the Ibis head, right? So really cool. I'm loving the song as well. Next is the title track, Cometh the Storm. 
uh, six minutes and 12 seconds. So, so far, not any short songs. The vocals um, are a bit back in the mix for a while, and then about a, a third of the way in or halfway in, the vocals come up front in the mix. Um, and I like the way they do that. that the, the vocals in the back of the mix at the beginning really sets the mood of the song. Uh, the drum beat has a world music feel about it. Uh, think um, Middle Eastern music meets Sepultura's Roots-like album. So kind of like that. Not exactly, but similar. Makes me think of that. Um, then when the when the vocals go back go into the the, the front of the mix, so to speak. It, it's still dark, it's still moody, it, it's fantastic. It's slow, it's doomy. The solo is at first very slow and drudgy and sludgy and then it gets some, then you get some shredding, it's fabulous. All right, next is, uh, it's a Turkish phrase, uh, hope, I hope I don't butcher it, but it's uh, Karen, Karen Lik Yol, which means dark way or dark path. It's Turkish, as I said. It's a totally Eastern sounding uh, song. It's not metal at all, uh, but it fits with the album um, nicely, I think. So there's something about it that has, even though it's not metal, it, it, it lends to what the whole vibe of this album is trying to accomplish. It, it arguably like, kind of like a motif or a theme, right? All right, so next is Soul's Golden Curse, 4 minutes and 52 seconds. Uh, this is another slow, plodding, great, doomy, sludgy song. La uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, the last minute and a half is some wonderful guitar from Matt. It's great. Next is a nice treat. It's a song called, well, if you look at the album closely, number seven, the beating has a slash after it to let you know that the next song is going to connect. There's a segue. There's no pause. So so the beating is number seven. This is a slow song. It's the shortest song on the album. It's two minutes and 29 seconds. It's a hardcore punk song, really hardcore punk slash metal. So it's, it's really punk. Metal is, is the best way to describe the song. Um, it's fast, it's furious, it's pounding, nice guitar solo. The guitar solo is totally metal, it's not punk, if you ask me. I love the song. Next is Tough Guy, 3 minutes and 44 seconds. Arguably a continuation from the beating. Uh, amazing opening riff. This song just kicks ass, and I'll leave it at that. Leave it to your imagination. It's, I, I really like the song. Uh, next is song track, I'm sorry, track number 9, which is Lightning Beard. Uh, three minutes and 33 seconds, another short piece, fast opening riff, nice headbanger is a great way to describe this. It's thrashy at times. Um, the bass is amazing here, probably the best. The whole album bass-wise sounds good, but perhaps this is my favorite when it comes to what's going on with the bass on the album. Next is Hunting Shadows. This is my least favorite song on the album. Uh, it's got some melody to it, sort of. It's, it's, it's kind of a, even though Matt sings the way he does, it has a melodic, the music has a more of a melody or an attempt at a melody more th than anywhere place in their discography, if you ask me, definitely on this album. Still the gruff vocals, like I said. Um, yeah, the way to describe the song is like a heavy metal drinking song. Think Vikings, that kind of thing. Um, not, not sure if that was their intention or Middle Eastern for that matter. Uh, okay, so finally the last song is an epic song in the sense that it's one second short of 10 minutes uh, and that's Darker Fleece, great title. Uh, first minute first minute and change is essentially just feedback, but it's kind of cool. Then at the, or, well, two minute mark actually is when it kicks in. It's slow, it's plodding. Um, it's that slow style, sludgy, doom, moody piece, right? Um, the guitar totally kicks ass, but I'm a little on the fence about whether or not um, how to rate this song. For right now, I've marked it as good. That may improve. I've only listened to the album twice. We're at, well, two and a half. Well, two and a third, because I've listened to the first, um, I've listened to the first four songs three times. And then the rest I've only listened to twice. So anyway, so let me give you my overall, uh, well, let me, let me give you my, how I rate each song. So Lamb's Bread, the opener, uh, is one of my favorites. I, I give this a, I give this an amazing, um, Burning Down, one of my favorites on the album, I give this an amazing, Tris Magistus is also one of my favorite songs, I give this an amazing, Come With The Storm, I give a very good, the title track, um, Karen Lick Yol is my least favorite, although I do like it, I rate this as a good, Soul's Golden Curse, 
a very good. The Beating and Tough Guy, I love. These are amazing or excellent. Lightning Beard, uh, amazing. Then Hunting Shadows, I rate this as just good. And then Darker Fleece, also just good. So no bad songs in this album. This is good from at least good from start to finish. But I said one, two, three, four, five, six of the 11 songs are amazing or excellent. So that's that tells you how much I like this album. So overall, how would I rate this? I would give it a great a 9 out of 10. I think it's massive. Um, I think it's colossal. Um, High on Fire, one of my favorite metal bands of all time. Uh, this morning I did a video on my top 25 um, favorite heavy metal bands of all time. Shameless plug. Take a look at that if you like. Um, I think High on Fire have finally cemented themselves as the rightful heir apparent to Motorhead. Although they don't sound exactly at like Motorhead, but I, I, I deem them the heir apparent to Motorhead and the Sons of Lemmy, if you will. I, I, I love, love this band. Uh, high praise indeed. So tell me what you think if you've heard this. Um, and if you've not heard it, tell me, are you anxious in a good way about listening to this? Anyway, take care. See you soon. Bye now.